Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor, and today I want to talk about INFP development and the difference between a non-actualized INFP and a self-actualized INFP. I got these thoughts when I was on my vacation last week in Budapest and uh, thought about, you know, the importance of combining developmental psychology with personality psychology. I mean, can we really talk about 16 personality types that are the same no matter what age they are or where they are at in life or what their struggles are in this time at this moment? No, I don't think so. And the same goes for the INFP. What's the difference between an INFP child and an INFP adult? What happens when an INFP becomes actualized? When an INFP starts out in life, I think there is uh, quite a marvel with the mystery of life. There is a quick perception that life is something fundamentally strange and complex. There is a feeling that life is something constantly changing and evolving that everything around you is constantly twisting and turning and showing new sides to itself and that uh, there is a desire to understand the nature of things you know who am i why am i here what is this what is life what what is the who is my mom who is my dad who are these people who am i and what is it I am here to do. Why was I born here? Why was I placed here? There is a quick awareness of your own self, your own ethics, and your own identity. And there is a, you know, deeper innocence that only evolves as you grow. You know, you, as an INFP, when you grow uh, past this, there is a desire to quickly form magical explanations and spiritual beliefs about the world. You know, we develop as spiritual beings almost before we develop as physical beings. You know, before we start taking space in the world, we start immediately forming some quick assumptions about is there a God or not? Is there fate? Is there karma? Is there some kind of force in the world that rewards right and wrong? Will I be punished if I do something bad? What happens if I lie? What happens if I tell the truth? What happens if I do this compared to that? And as an INFP, there is a strong awareness and concept of ethics and the need for ethics and the need for uh, doing the right thing. There is a strong compass, a strong gut feeling that's in the beginning almost instinctive. It's a, no, I don't want to go there. There's no, I don't want to see that. I don't want to be here. I don't want to talk to that person. I don't uh, uh, want to uh, do that thing. It's not me. I, I, I'm not supposed to do that. If I do that, I will be punished or... I will feel guilty or I will there's something bad will happen so the INFP uh, is just as preoccupied with you know the mystery of life as how truly overwhelming and uh, harsh life can be at the same time there is an awareness that life has a dark side you know that it uh, can completely overwhelm you that it can swarm you that there it can harm you that it can hurt you that there can be conflict and war and tension and problems and uh, punishments and uh, that bad things can happen and that uh, you know uh, you can be pushed or forced or controlled or uh, you can starve you can feel hungry you can feel uh, sad you can feel all these things you know there's a quick the overwhelming realization of you know the danger of life and uh, the danger of the law and of breaking the rules and of going against the flow or of uh, change and of uh, stability and of being controlled so for an INFP in particular it's that fear of being controlled or being held back or being uh, having a strong authoritative person force uh, their views and opinions and beliefs on you, having being manipulated, being uh, yelled at, being threatened uh, with violence, you know, there that those fears are very strong in an INFP, and uh, these things are things that can drive an INFP towards like this pan labyrinth style mystique, you know, where you start like going down escapist routes, you know. Uh, choosing to believe in a prince or uh, prince charming or a savior or 
somebody that will come and make things better or uh, choosing to believe in if I just do the right thing, if I just tell the truth, uh, things will get better. Or I can uh, if I just am, if I'm just myself, I will be accepted and things will work out and the good uh, good will prevail. As you grow older, there can be a, there is a natural like war against God in a sense, you know, spiritually. I think everybody goes through this in like the teenager phase where there is this disappointment, uh, overwhelming that this isn't the case always. Sometimes uh, you are punished for telling the truth or for being yourself or for speaking your mind. Or even though you've done the right thing, you can be misunderstood. You can... Uh, uh, other people might still go against you. There might still be people, bullies or rude people or evil people in the world that uh, will try to assert themselves on you or push you or force you to do something you don't want. So INFPs are definitely in the rebel group of the MBTI as one of the people that will strongly want to go against the flow. But they're not very obvious in the rebell rebellion. Uh, not in the sense an ENTP might be or an ENFP in the sense. Uh, they're n more in the sense of uh, avoiding the mainstream, avoiding the crowd, avoiding the norm uh, and going your own way. And in a way, going their own way, even though it might alienate you from the crowd or even if it, even if it means you become alone and uh, even if there's nobody else with you or... Uh, no friends or anybody around you. So the INFP's uh, style of asserting themselves is protecting themselves. They, rather than trying to aggressively push themselves and their identity on the world, are trying to signal to the world uh, by becoming, by avoiding the world or by avoiding the norm or avoiding what everybody else does. Choosing not to listen to the same songs everybody else do, does. Choosing not to attend the same parties or to uh, laugh at the same jokes or to read the same things or to dress the same way as other people. So choosing to do something deliberately different. But at the same time being very remarkably quiet about this. INFPs are unlikely to <laughs> scream out loud, Here I am, world! accept me, take me or leave me, and more likely they are going to simply go their own path in a quiet way. And this is the problem with the INFP, that they can make themselves almost invisible and they can always disappear from the world. They might not be seen or noticed by their teachers or their parents. Uh, people might assume that they're okay even though, because they don't say anything, but inside they might still have very difficult experiences or pain or struggles or fears and things that they might need help with. So as an INFP in this stage, it's uh, very difficult to be seen and heard and to get your own voice heard. The first step to self-actualization in the INFP is uh, probably in the fourth stage. Uh, in the blue stage where they start to you know really rekindle their passions and hobbies there's uh, first steps into uh, you know finding your life path or purpose or going developing a skill or talent or ability that is uniquely yours or uh, finding something you love or a hobby or an outlet or an interest that is really important to you it's the first time when you allow yourself to really write something that's deeply you and uh, to try to become good at it, you know, to try to become good at being yourself, to successful at uh, doing your own thing or uh, professional in whatever it is you do. It's uh, the time when you start applying rules and ethics and standards for yourself. So finally, there's a... Uh, development of uh, base empathy or base level of uh, emotional maturity in that I am not just uh, going to go my own way but I'm also going to hold myself accountable for myself and my own behavior while I go my own way. I'm also going to ask myself to be fully real in what I do and if I'm not I'm going to take responsibility for this you know the war of against god is over 
<laughs> and uh, instead you are starting to learn to become your own master. You're starting to learn to become self-reliant. You're starting to say, yeah, my actions have consequences and I have a duty to myself to take care of myself, you know, to eat on time, to do things on time, to uh, finish an assignment in school or to do something, not because the teacher told me to, but because I want myself to do it. I expect of myself to finish this class and to move on with good grades or to uh, so that I can be myself, so that I can achieve this, so that I can do that. So yeah, there is something constraining in this. There is a feeling that I ought to do this, I have to do this, I'm forced to do this. But there is also something mature in these constraints. Uh, there is uh, a letting go of uh, some excessive tendencies. Uh, you know, if uh, you were almost excessively attached to your own self and uh, going against the norm in the past, uh, you start recognizing that sometimes uh, it is in my nature to do what everyone else does <laughs> as well. <laughs> sometimes it's also me to do what everyone else does and I can uh, do what everyone else does my own way and still be myself and still be true to myself doing it. So what st starts to happen here and this is uh, you know where things get really interesting for INFPs I think is uh, when you hit that point of true autonomy and a true sense of achievement, you know, it's when you start finishing your first songs, your first pieces of writing, your first pieces of art. It's when you start putting things out there. And uh, it's when you start uh, truly committing yourself in a career or in work or whatever it is you're doing, whatever you're, whether you're a taxi driver, a barista, serving coffee, whatever, you find your own way to do something. You start leaving something uniquely you in everything you do. Every coffee mug has an unique signature. Every uh, time you give somebody a taxi ride, uh, you let them listen to something uh, that is uniquely you. You tell a story, you tell something interesting, you... Uh, do something that leaves an impact on other people. You know, you start leaving traces of yourself in everything you do, wherever you go. So this is where things get really interesting because uh, you not only have the skills, you have not only learned the skills of your craft or whatever it is you want to do, but you've also learned to express yourself and to make this craft your own. You found a way to be yourself or do your own thing in what you do and uh, to do it consistently so this is kind of like a discovery phase for INFPs uh, it's uh, when you start truly really figuring out some of the mysteries of life and uh, uh, where you start saying oh this is what life is oh this is what my voice sounds like oh this is what uh, my writing looks like this is when you start getting a third perspective on yourself you start uh, seeing yourself from the perspective of other not just from the perspective of yourself so there's no longer a worry about what other people think about you or whether other people will judge you for what you do because you have replaced the voice of other with yourself now it is you that is looking at that work and now you're looking at that and you're thinking is that good enough is that me is that my sound is that how i sound is that uh, how my handwriting looks like is that how i want it to look like is that how i want things to be so you start truly, you know, not just holding yourself accountable, but you also start listening to yourself and hearing your own voice and seeing yourself fully. You know, it's crazy. It takes such a long time to truly see yourself. I think uh, we spend the first fourth or more of our life, you know, not being able to truly see ourselves and truly hear ourselves. So we, so we are extra loud. We are extra... Uh, exhibitionistic we're extra we're extremely crazy about it because we don't now know how we sound we we're very neurotic about it because we don't know how we sound we don't know if it will, is good or not we don't know what it is but when we hit this stage we start to you know know what it is and we start uh, because you know when you see yourself from a third pers person's perspective 
you also start, you know, finding uh, acceptance. You start seeing, uh, yeah, that might not be perfect. It might not be the best work ever. It might not be the most incredible or dramatic uh, solution to life's problems. But it is me. It is what I am. It is what I have done. And I can understand it because I can see from the third person's perspective how I did it and how I ended up there and why it turned out the way it did. So we really begin to apply ourselves into what we do. And uh, this is uh, also when we start, you know, developing uh, more real and full empathy. As we grow past this stage, we not only start seeing ourselves, but we start to see and understand the people around us. We start learning to put ourselves in other people's position. We start seeing why other people do things the way they do. We start understanding their decisions, their problem solving, their values, their beliefs. And we start understanding the whole that surrounds us. I know the baseline is that INFPs are focused on themselves before others or before the tribe. But no matter what stage they're in, INFPs can be extremely helpful and kind people. Kindness can come before empathy. You can be kind to another person by being honest to them, by being real with them, by uh, sharing your feelings with another person. You can be truly kind to another person by doing such a thing. You know, telling the truth is very powerful and uh, Nobody can tell the truth like a kid can, for example. So, in uh, recognizing that empathy is something different from uh, being an INFP or from being uh, kind, there is a recognition that empathy is just being able to be kind to another person and to see from a third person's perspective how they feel and how they respond to your kindness and how they learn from it and how they evolve with it. So there is a compassionate kindness and an aware conscious kindness. There is a kindness that also accepts the other person's feelings and the other person's values. There is an honesty that doesn't push itself on other people, but an honesty that sees other people and how other people understand what you say and how other people deal with it and grow with it. So in this uh, green stage, you start forming true human bonds and you start uh, truly uh, becoming a part of a community. Uh, you recognize that these are my values, not everybody's values. These are my views, my feelings, my needs, not everybody's needs. And you start learning to separate your own feelings from the feelings of other people. It's crazy it takes that long, but it, yeah, it really does. And not a lot of people even get there ever in their lifetime. Uh, and if they do, they only do it for a little bit and not for all the way through. So this is almost the post-actualization stage. Because uh, in this sense, we not only focus on our own achievements and what we leave into the world, but what we as a world, as a whole, make together. So if as an INFP it was difficult for you to fit in with a concert or an orchestra or with your co-workers or with other people doing what you did in the past, it might get easier. And that's the life lesson of Spiral Dynamics. Whatever fears or worries you have right now, they might get easier they might disappear entirely. They might be replaced by other things and other worries and new concerns. With every stage, there is an increased awareness and consciousness. And uh, ultimately, that's the goal of psychology, you know, to teach people to be conscious of life, of themselves and of others, and to develop and nurture empathy and understanding of self and of other. So, yeah. With all, no further ado, what stage are you in? Are you currently in the finding your feet survival stage? 
Are you in the magical beliefs and faith stage? Are you in the war against God stage? Are you in the becoming your own master stage? Are you in the applying yourself to life and leaving a trace of yourself in life stage? Or are you in the sense of making peace and becoming a part of the orchestra of life? Uh, letting your voice come and shine in harmony with the voice of other people. What stage are you currently in and have you studied spiral dynamics already? And uh, what do you think about the project of integrating personality psychology with development psychology? Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.